Hi, I'm Theo Stocker for Yachting Monthly at the South Coast Boat Show. Um, and I've looked at a couple of multi-hulls today and there's just one more that I want to show you, um, which is a pretty new boat. It was designed uh, just uh, in 2019, launched in 2020. Um, but this is the Corsair 880 and it's a pretty exciting boat. So let's have a look. Starting at the bow, you can see obviously uh, three floats and uh, the 880 has really attempted to put loads of buoyancy up forwards, both in the central hull and in the floats. Um, that's to give it more stability, more power. Um, so it's a bit safer when you're overpressed. It can take a bit more pushing, uh, which makes it faster and you get lift from that as well. Um, the hulls fold in and just under the wings here, Sorry about that, there's a vessel underway somewhere. Um, uh, these hinge up and then the hulls tuck underneath uh, the central hull uh, so that the boat stays stable even with the hulls folded in. Uh, so you can maneuver through locks, get into your mooring, that kind of thing, uh, without having to have the hulls fully extended. And it also means that this boat is road trailerable, gets in under your three meter maximum width. Um, it's got a rotating wing mast. We'll have a look at that in a second. Um, trampolines, which you can sit outboard on. Fairly sporty if you've got toe straps. Uh, and then you've got these helm seats and a reasonably well-protected cockpit. And this one is set up with a cruising spec. Uh, and she's got a lifting daggerboard and a lifting rudder, which is fully up um, at the moment. And that means that you can uh, creek crawl and you can even dry it out on the beach if you want to. Let's step aboard and have a look. Right, here we are in the cockpit. And this boat, as I said, is set up with a cruising spec, which means she's got um, a spray hood, little dodger, fairly small thing, but enough to give you some shelter from the elements. Um, and she hasn't got a racing pack of sails on, um, slightly more conservative sails, uh, but she will still shift it. Um, this boat on delivery here, not pushing it at all, was hitting 17 knots. Um, a boat just like this one has gone 26 knots. So you're gonna get over 20 knots from this boat pretty easily, which isn't bad for a 28 footer. In terms of the cockpit, you've got helm seats here, um, uh, aft, and then you've got a forward end of the cockpit here, where you've got enough space for two either side. So you could have potentially five, four, five, four people probably comfortably, uh, but you could fit six in the cockpit. Um, you've got lines led aft here to the coach roof um, here for halyards, things like that. Uh, we've got uh, sheet winches um, for reaching sails, but it's actually got a self-tacking jib, uh, which I think comes up to, uh, uh, yeah, this winch here. Right, at the helm, they've actually put in these nice canvas um, seats. We've got a spin lock uh, tiller extension here. So you can sit here. Um, I've got the uh, sheet winches here for your Genoa. I could sit further forwards quite easily. Um, jib sheet I can reach with that hand. But mainly I'm going to either be playing the traveller or the main sheet. Um, I can also have crew sitting out on the side deck, tucking their feet under the toe straps. And one nice little touch is that if I'm under power, the um, engine and the rudder are connected with a little push rod. So as I move the tiller, it's also steering the engine, which makes the boat that much more maneuverable. Um, and then the throttle for the outboard engines on the back. Um, I guess you could swap to an electric if you wanted to, um, but this boat has a 10 horsepower um, petrol outboard. On the transom, we've got a small uh, sugar scoop bathing platform with a fold down ladder. And then here I've got a hatch that goes into the aft cabin. I can use that for a bit of stowage or ventilation down below. Um, and then the throttle just there. Let's have a quick look on deck. So there are small side decks 
for walking forwards or you can walk on the trampolines. We've got halyards here for spinnakers, um, downwind sails. Um, I can come all the way out here, got the toe straps and there's access into the floats here where you get loads of stowage space um, for extra clobber, that kind of thing. There we go, nice fresh styrene smell in there. Um, and then forwards, we can go up onto the foredeck. On the foredeck, let's have a look. So we've got this rotating wing mast. We've got a track for a self-tacking jib. Um, we've got some ventilation for the saloon and for the forward cabin. Sorry, that's the heads compartment actually. Um, and then at the front, we've got a small anchor locker. We've got a bowsprit and a furling head sail. Um, that's a retractable, oh, there we go. That's that, there we go, there's your anchor locker. And then we've got a retractable bowsprit um, for off-wind sails. Right, let's have a look below. Down below, you've got a surprising amount of space. I've got over six foot of headroom here, probably about 185, 190 standing headroom, which is a real surprise for a 28 footer. Um, we've got these nice high up cushions on either side. So you've got space for one, two, three, four. You might squeeze five people in here around this little um, saloon table. Everything's all about keeping things light in a boat like this. Displacement of 1600 kilos total, which is a huge part of why it can perform so well. Um, the saloon is built around, to some extent, this centerboard case, which we'll have a look at in a moment. Um, that's a dagger board that goes all the way down. Um, we've got a small galley here with a sink and an alcohol stove. Stowage is in these bins outboard. So it's a lot more like sort of camping on the water rather than luxury cruising. But this boat is all about speed and keeping things light. And we've also got quite a nice little just a cool box drawer fridge here. And then under the companionway steps, carbon fiber, of course, pull those just hinge to one side and you've got a berth under there. That's billed as a double berth. If you're sharing that with somebody, you're going to need to be reasonably cozy with them. Let's have a look forwards. So in here, we've got the heads, toilet seat, and we've got a V berth forwards. There's an escape hatch here. If you've got flooding or fire there, um, you'd need to kick that out. That's not a hinged one. Um, and then you've got a small sink to starboard. You've got some ventilation above there, and you've got a canvas screen that rolls down um, to give you a little bit of privacy in the forward berth. So that's the Corsair 880. She looks like a pretty exciting boat, and the idea of doing 25 knots in a 28 footer seems frankly ridiculous. Um, uh, she's all about performance, stability. And she's going to appeal to somebody who wants to do some fast cruising. You could take her across the English Channel. You are unlikely to take her across the Atlantic. Um, people uh, race these on the Mokra fleet under the Mokra rating, um, which is the multi-hull rating system, uh, and would be a lot of fun. A lot of people just have them as a toy. They go incredibly fast. You can do some lightweight cruising. Uh, you're not going to do any sort of heavy long-term cruising in a boat sort of this of this size because she just doesn't have the sto stowage capacity and that kind of thing it's a little bit more lightweight but for a week's cruise two week cruise um weekending or just playing about for the day um you're going to have a lot of fun in this boat um design wise she um she's designed to handle quite a lot and you can push her quite hard thanks to all of the extra buoyancy up forwards in terms of price, um, she's 138,000 X VAT, X everything base price. This boat, as it is, including VAT, VAT to sail it away, is 220,000 pounds. It's a fair amount of money for a 28 footer, but if you were to look at another boat that could do 25 knots, you would be paying a lot more money than that. Um, so I think, bang for your buck, this boat gives you a lot of fun.